What is it? This is a really difficult gospel. And it just happens that no lesser man than David Cameron was floored by it this week when some radio person asked him how he reacts as a good member of the Church of England to the command to sell all his possessions and give everything to the poor. And he he did quite well, but I don't think he had GCSE religious studies. So Jesus, in this Gospel, is telling us to sell what we own. And then he goes on to remind us that we must be aware of the imminent arrival of the Son of Man. Now looking around you, I cannot think that many of you have sold all your possessions and given them all to the poor. And I do not think, and this is an advert, I do not think that the Christchurch tabletop sale, which is happening after church this morning for the Community Hall Appeal, is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about when he said, sell everything and give it to the poor. And so we have a problem with the very beginning of today's Gospel, because we don't do it. And then we have another problem because most of us probably don't really think that the end of the world is about to happen and that God is going to arrive and sort everything out. And as somebody who lived five years in Syria, I wish he would. Jesus doesn't just say, sell everything. There is, of course, a setting for what he's saying. And he begins today's reading by talking about our Father. He says, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He is saying that the beginning of our Christian life is an awareness of God's generosity. The Father's nature, says Jesus, the Son... The Father's nature is to give. And our lives, as his sons and daughters, is to be like our Father and to be generous. Where is the Father's heart? What matters to him? Well, you do. I do. The people down the road who don't come to church matter. God's treasure is us, his world. So when Jesus makes the demand on us to sell everything that we have, it's not in order to get into God's good books, but it's a reflection of what it means for us to be the children of God. You see, our Christian life is not about worshipping an idol. It is about sharing in the divine nature. The Eucharist that we celebrate today, this holy feast, is a feeding on God for us to be like him and to be part of what he does, the building of the kingdom. It is, says Jesus, the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's our vocation. That is our calling as Christians. It is also our aspiration, because actually we're not altogether there yet. It is our aspiration to be sharing in God's nature. It is our hope to be doing his work. Maybe, to turn it on its head, it's our good pleasure to build the kingdom of God and give it to God. And then the second part of the Gospel is about this idea of the expectation of the end. Most people, as far as I can work out, 
And I may be wrong, I usually am, but most people in Galilee in the first century believed that the world was about to end. They didn't think it was very old and they thought it's about to come to a conclusion, a happy conclusion with God intervening. And it's a bit like the assumption that most of us have got that in a hundred years' time, Mortlake will probably be underwater because of melting ice caps and all that sort of thing. It's just what we assume to be true. Living a life of expectancy was what they were going through. It's not just, though, waiting for the end of the world. Now, I don't know if you listen to from our own correspondent. Um, well, now, who was on me to, in the tur- who's with the, me on the Turkey pilgrimage? Um, one, three of you, right. Um, Last year we, we were um, we're in eastern Turkey and, and yesterday on, from our own correspondent um, there was a little piece about the wonderful cliffside monastery of Mor Augen, abandoned for many years during the Kurdish wars in Turkey. And the first time I ever visited this monastery it was just an abandoned set of buildings. And then I visited it slightly later when I'd heard that a monk had decided to take over. And on the altar, covered in a bright red veil, were the cup and the plates, the chalice and pattern, to be used in the Eucharist. And for those of you who were with me, and the rest of you who have lived lives of great ignorance because you didn't choose to travel, uh, you, you would remember um, that one of the, t- the things in the Syriac tradition is that it, instead of being like this, having a bald, empty altar, you always had the chalice and pattern waiting, ready for the celebration of the Eucharist, because we should always be ready to meet Christ. And so when I went into that church and saw the chalice and pattern on the altar, I knew this is a church which is now alive. It is a church full of expectation. They do it because they always want to be prepared to worship Christ. And we never know when we are going to meet him. We do not know how we are going to meet Christ, not simply when we worship him, but in the here and now of our daily lives. So I want us to get from this gospel reading a sense of God is about to meet me. Not God the policeman who's going to catch you out when you have, well, whatever it is that you've done. But God is about to meet you because he adores you. But also we might be finding Christ being crucified. We might find God in all sorts of situations. God about to meet me. If we imagine that at every moment in our life, God is about to give us the kingdom, that's his good pleasure. Maybe, if we have that sense of expectation, we will be better co-workers with him in building the kingdom. Because I believe that what we do in the Eucharist is gather together to be fed to build God's kingdom in the world. It's clear from today's Gospel, as so frequently when we read the New Testament, when we read Jesus' teaching, that the kingdom which Jesus proclaims stands very squarely against many of the things that are really sick in our society. The, The greed which undermines British society, for instance. The lack of a sense of justice for the people at the bottom of the pile. Those are the people about whom Jesus speaks particularly. He doesn't say how blessed are the rich and the powerful and the rulers. Blessed are the meek. Jesus is saying 
that we as the church need to be reminding society of a different set of values. And, of course, one of the worst things, I think, in British society is a complete sense of the absence of God in political discourse. So it was really rather good that David Cameron not only had to struggle with a difficult piece of scripture, but he said, well, I am a practicing member of the Church of England, which is a brave thing. And the fact that it's a brave thing is rather worrying about our society. So this message that we have today about God's generosity giving us the kingdom and about our need to be always expecting to meet God in all sorts of situations. Jesus invites us to live that life based on God's generosity, on caring for the oppressed, and having a sense of God's very closeness. Today's gospel is a difficult gospel because the gospel is difficult, which is why so few people come to church. It's much easier if you happen to be a 30-year-old to go clubbing. Today's gospel is difficult But we, as Christians, should rise to the challenge. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.